What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Walmart's all-new on-media streamer running Google TV. Now, last year, 2022, we took a look at their first model that hit the shelves, and it was powered by an Amlogic S905. This one here is still the S905, but it's the Y4 with AV1 video support, and it's coming in at $20. So this is the 2023 model of the On Media streamer. And if you really wanted to get down to the nitty gritty, it's actually only $19.88 over on Walmart's website. You can pick these up online or in store. And personally, I do think it's worth $20 if you're trying to turn an older TV into a smart TV. Now, of course, a lot of new TVs already come with these functions built in, but this is pretty cool to have a little option like this for super cheap. Now inside of the box, obviously, we're going to get the media device itself, and I guess they're calling it the On Watch. We also have our USB power supply, 1 amp, 5 volt, 6 foot HDMI cable, and we do have the voice remote. So we can search with our voice while we're using Google TV on this device, plus we've got two AAA batteries. It's definitely not a higher-end Android TV like the NVIDIA Shield, but uh, for the price here, I think we can get some pretty good performance and use out of it. I will be testing out some 4K video playback, some native Android gaming, and especially emulation on this thing. A lot of people, including myself, do refer to these as Android boxes, but it's more of a puck, and not much has changed from the first generation of the on-streamer. We've still got one full-size HDMI port out and micro USB in. I was really hoping they upgraded this to USB Type-C just to make it a little easier to add an extra USB port, but you can always pick up one of these micro USB OTG adapters on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. And it does work with the new on streamer. So if you wanted to add external storage like a USB drive or micro SD card, you can do it. And it also supports a mouse and keyboard for navigation. And by the way, they do make these OTG adapters with more than one USB port. Personally, I would only go with two ports, one for a mouse and keyboard combo, the other one for a USB drive. When it comes to the specs, for the CPU, we've got that Amlogic S905Y4. It's a Cortex A35 ARM SoC with four cores at 1.8 gigahertz. This comes with two gigabytes of RAM and eight gigabytes of internal storage, but only 5.1 gigabytes is free to the user. But remember, we can add OTG with an adapter supports 4K 60, and we've got Google TV based on Android 12. Setup on the device is super easy. You can either use the Google Home app from your phone to sign in basically automatically, or you can do it all on the device itself. First boot straight out of the box, did have an update, went ahead and let that finish up. It was only 80 megabytes, and once that was done, I was ready to start using the device. Definitely a little different from Android TV. We got our 4U section live section so we can go through and watch live videos right now or live uh, broadcast right now most of this stuff is going to be streaming from like pluto or another app that you have installed that does live media uh, we've got our app section from here we can go to the app store and uh, when it comes to gaming on these google tvs or android tvs not as many games as you know your android phone but there are some here that actually work pretty well with this hardware i'm going to test out a couple but uh, we can also install some emulators, and that's one of the main things I wanted to take a look at. Got some installed here. I'm going to go with some PSP, some N64, uh, some GameCube, and PS1 using RetroArch. Now, going up over PSP is kind of going to be out of the question. Some Dreamcast games may run decently on this hardware, but we're not working with high-end specs whatsoever. The final thing here, we've got our library for previously purchased shows. Very quick little interface. I'm actually surprised at how nice this is running. As you saw, we can use external storage with an adapter. And right now I'm actually using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. So we can use external game controllers. And this is going to come in really handy for obviously gaming and emulation on a small device like this. So I've got everything set up and I've tested a few things out so far. Remember, I plugged in that USB adapter. So we've got an extra USB port. I've got a mouse connected. As you can see, we've got that cursor there, and it does work. This was pretty cool to see. Now, I've only got uh, one port here, so I will need to disconnect. But one of the main things that, you know, I wanted to take a look at was just extra storage. As I mentioned, we've got 8 gigabytes of storage, but we only have 5.1 gigs free. Now, this is actually great for just all of your uh, streaming apps and everything like that. You're never going to run out. But some people may want to run external media from a USB drive or hard drive. And I've just plugged my USB in here, which is the 16 gigabyte USB drive, analyzing media for storage. So we do have access to external storage. We can set this up as external or internal. 
Let me head over to the settings real quick. We can browse. This is set up as external storage, or we can set it up as device storage. We can move all of our apps from the internal storage over here. And this is great for just upping the total storage on the device, but personally, I like external storage. That way I can just plug it right back into my PC, transfer my movies, games, and things like that right back over to it. So with one of these cheap adapters, it does kind of give you a whole new use case scenario with this device. I did want to show you real quick that this is the newer model. So we've got that Amlogic S905Y4. So we've got AV1 video support. And uh, it's definitely touted as a 4K playback device. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Let's head over to YouTube real quick and we'll test something out. All right, just show you here, 4K60. And this is 4K60 HDR, does support HDR. Overall, very smooth experience with 4K video playback. I was kind of impressed here seeing the performance and you know these S905 chips have been on the market for a while now for a very long time and they're very mature in their software support so I had a good feeling we'd have decent performance here not as good as some of the higher end chips you know the more expensive units but I'm not complaining here because this was only a $20 Android box. And we do have access to 4K Netflix, Disney+, Hulu, HBO Max, because we are using Google TV here. DRM is a bit different when it comes to Google TV versus, let's say, an Android tablet from China. So yeah, we can get 4K with all of those apps also. Next thing I wanted to do was test out some native Android gaming. And we're going to start off light here. I mean, across the board, it's going to be kind of light with Android gaming. If you're familiar with Google TV or Android TVs in general, you know uh, the App Store when it comes to games can be a bit lackluster. Now it doesn't mean there aren't games that are pretty fun to play, but nothing super high end. Another one I saw on the front page was Horizon Chase. It runs great, but there's one weird thing here. I lost sound. So initially when I booted this game up, I had sound working. As soon as I got into gameplay here, it just quit on me. Not the full device, just this game. If I go back to the menu, I've got sound. It was just a really weird thing that happened with this one. And the final native Android game we're going to test here is one I actually sideloaded. We've got Stardew Valley. Again, with all of these games that you saw, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. And this is another one that's going to run really well. But don't expect to run like Call of Duty Mobile or Genshin Impact on something like this. Even if you could get it up and running in uh, Google TV or Android TV, you're not going to get great performance with that Amlogic S905. And finally, moving over to some emulation. So from the App Store, we can actually download RetroArch. It installs for us just fine. I've downloaded some cores. And in RetroArch, I'm going to be testing out Game Boy Advance, PlayStation 1, and N64. For PSP, we use the standalone version of PPSSPP. And of course, for these easier to emulate games from NES up to Game Boy Advance, you're going to get full speed. PC Engine, Neo Geo, you want to do some CPS 1, 2, and 3. Original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, SNES. I mean, there's a ton of different emulators that are going to run at full speed through RetroArch, including PlayStation 1. Still using RetroArch here, as you can tell by the FPS counter in the top right hand corner. And with this one, I'm using the PC SX Rearmed Core. Not bad. I also tested Tekken 3 with the Amlogic S905. I've always had really good luck with PlayStation 1. And, you know, most of the stuff in the library should run at full speed. Taking it up to N64, this is where I started seeing it struggle. Now, I will admit, I am using the Mupin 64 core here with RetroArch and using a standalone emulator might work out better, but I was already here, everything was set up, and I figured I'd go ahead and test it. Now, the video here isn't too bad. Every once in a while, we get a slowdown, but I've got kind of a choppiness with the sound, and uh, like I mentioned, a standalone might work a little better than RetroArch. And the final emulator I wanted to take a look at was PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, easier to emulate games are going to run pretty decently. A lot of the stuff that natively ran at 30 FPS on the original PSP will run at full speed. With something like the God of War franchise, you will need to turn on frame skip in order to get at least a little bit of a playable experience out of it. It's not going to run at 60. You could run that game at 30 with frame skip on. So overall, I mean, I wouldn't pick this up specifically for PSP, but there are games that are going to run. 
So overall, I mean, it's really not a bad Android TV for $20 if you know what you're getting into. Don't expect Nvidia Shield performance out of this thing. And like I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of TVs that you already have probably in the house right now have smart features built in. So this is something that's not for everybody, but if you're looking for a cheap alternative to turn one of your older TVs into a smart TV or just convert it from Roku to Android, then I think $20 isn't a bad deal at all for this unit. Most of the time you will find these in store, but I'll leave a link to the Walmart website so you can get your hands on one if you're interested. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this device, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.